Tonight, Ray opposes intelligent thinking. Don't try and figure things out. Steve has a revelation. Wait, that means I'm going to heaven and Ray's going to hell. Yes. And I compare rocks to coconuts. The rock is harder than the coconut. Why hello my fellow apes, I hope you're well. Welcome to the second episode of Low Fruit. This is going to be a hell of a fun series uh, for me and everyone watching, but not for Reese. Because... It's mostly painful. Yeah, well, see, what we've got today is an absolute treat. Uh, you may have heard of him, Ray Comfort. He recently released a video titled, Do This and Your Faith Will Crumble. And we listened to the first minute, minute and a half. And I, and I wish I could go back to a time when I hadn't heard of Ray Comfort. I've never seen a man put out so many words yet say so little. <laughs> yes. It's well, astonishing. <laughs> if, if we get uh, a reflection, even a pale reflection of how he reacted to the first <laughs> minute, then we are in for a treat. This is a hell of a video. It's going to require a lot of pausing, which we'll explain why uh, oh, shortly. Yeah. But listen, this is Reese. If you don't know who he is, I was here last time. Same as everyone else, you know, right? You know, icon we, at the bottom somewhere. Uh, icon at the bottom, he's here. <laughs> I give the best introduction. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it nailed. <laughs> I believe one of the greatest hindrances of people coming to Christ is a misunderstanding of believing in God and having faith in God. They think they're synonymous when they're not. So it might seem a little bit strange to stop less than 10 seconds into his video, but I think it's quite important that we do because he started here with saying, belief and faith are not synonymous. And I actually largely agree with that. They're not. Yes, um, I, I also agree. The thing is, is that it depends on who you're talking to. There's many different ways to define belief. There's many different ways to define faith. Uh, theists are pretty notorious for conflating and yeah. equivocating on these terms. It's also the first thing that he says. And yes. what we got from the first minute is that he's saying, look, uh, there is a difference between belief and faith. And like his, his what he's saying pivots on this. Yeah. And so... Um, Okay, fair enough. Tell us what you think, Ray, because we'll we meet you where you are. Yeah, we, we don't actually know what you're going to define it as just yet, but when someone says belief and faith, I have definitions in my head that I'm expecting to hear. Belief simply being convinced of a proposition, and faith being that where you're convinced, usually religiously, without any sort of proof or evidence required to believe it. Yeah, yeah, it's like if you have enough evidence to not need any faith well it's just a belief yes um whereas if you don't have enough evidence then you would cash it out as faith yeah like, yeah i broadly broadly would agree with that yeah but let's see how he's going to define it shall we yeah. i believe in god for the same reason i believe in gravity here we go <sighs> Hang on. Hang on. yes do it this is this is worth doing he's full on out the room okay that is a good thing we're gonna need these Thank God. We're not <laughs> sponsored by this, by the way. But, I do not uh, endorse alcoholism, but... No, no, no. Alcohol is a very bad idea. Seriously, this... If you're watching this video... You know, the only way that my viewer retention is going to be high on this video is if people join us in this, <laughs> in this ritual. I can't see, hear, touch, taste, or smell gravity, but I believe in it because I can see its effects. And I can't see, hear, touch, taste, or smell God, but I believe in his existence intellectually because I can see the effects of God. See, I can see the effects of gravity, right? And and we can we have theories that, that explain it. I don't see the effects of God. I don't see a God at all. I mean, Ray does, and fair enough, I can see what he's doing here, trying to compare the two. He's basically explaining that he has intellectual reason to believe in God in the same reason for the same reasons that he has intellectual reason to believe in gravity but gra there's, there's just so much to unpack here like gravity and god well we're you, going super basic when, you, when you're making an analogy you, you have to find something that has some form of similarities between yes them, which i already argue he's failed yes um we 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 have a description of gravity what it is and what it does yep we don't really have quite such a tight thing for god Depending on who you ask, you're going to get very, very different things. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it, yeah, completely depends on who you talk to. I mean, if we was to be... The most popular one you'll get is all-powerful and all-loving. Yeah. So what does that predict? Well, I don't know. Um, I'd certainly expect there to not be any evil. 
Yes, exactly. You you would expect no evil. Why? Because he's all powerful, so he can do anything he wants, and he's all loving. So he's going to get rid of the evil. So where does the evil come into this? Now, you've got all these theodicies to try and explain it. There's a lot of them, which tends to explain why they're not very effective. But but God is capable of more than that. God is apparently capable mm. of everything. Yeah. So what else can we predict Every, everything... and test from that? We've, we've got to be able to predict and test everything to say we see the effects of God. Yeah. Whereas with gravity, well, we've got... Uh, it's probably two different ways people were doing it, depending on if it's just... just in relation to Earth, okay? So it would be uh, an attractive force that pulls objects downwards towards the centre of mass of the Earth. Yep. And you can test that quite simply by, I don't know, dropping this memory card. There we go, test it. I could also it... repeat that test over and over and get similar results. I can do it with other objects and get similar results. What can we predict and test as the effect of God being everything? You can't. <laughs> it, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, yeah, I've heard this analogy thrown about a lot. If you, I mean, if you're watching, you've probably heard this one thrown about a lot. But yeah, I, the main thing I'm getting from this, considering that he opened by saying that there's a difference between belief and faith, is that he's saying that gravity falls into the belief category. For evidential reasons. For, yes, for evidential intellectual reasons. And that's why he believes in God evidential intellectual reasons yeah i think that's what he's trying to say yep just not done it very well all of creation screams that there's a creator you can see the genius of god's creative hand through creation <laughs> play that again play that again <laughs> but slower <laughs> all of creation screams that there's a creator you can see the genius of god's creative hand through creation Right, let, let's just cut the fluff words out of that. All of creation screams a creator. You can see the creator through creation. <laughs> it's not said anything. It's, not... <laughs> it's a nothing statement, Ray. You're not. You're not saying anything there. <laughs> no, so, no, sorry. We, we... You, what, you what, can do what, it. No, what would be an equivalent of that? There's uh, got to be an equivalent can, of that. You can do it well with anything. Let's Go start on. with something that we can prove is true. Uh, all of the oceans scream of water. You can see the water through the oceans. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's it doesn't anything. say anything. Right. Um, wait, wait, you need lovely music in the background. Yeah, let, let's see yeah, if we yeah. can do it for something that we, we, we don't have any evidence for existing. Uh, so give me the music. Okay, all right, we're going to cue music. music, all right? Let's do this. All of the footprints scream of Bigfoot. All of the... <laughs> <laughs> no, so, come on, no, you, come no, on no, you, can do this, you can do this, you can do this. All of the... All of the foot. No, I'm gonna to have to stop until you stop laughing now because we've got a cut from the beginning. <laughs> right, you ready? No, go. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh in the background. You can't do anything about it. You might just have to zoom in on me then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> All of the footprint screams of Bigfoot. You can see <laughs> Bigfoot through the footprints. <laughs> it's such a nonsense. <laughs> Oh, you got God. anyone else? Yeah, no. <laughs> We're going to make you listen to that again. <laughs> That's such a non-statement. All of creation screams that there's a creator. You can see the genius of God's creative hand through creation. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows his handiwork. <laughs> Look at the editing. <laughs> It's on the screen static, and then it zooms in, all in the space of about half a second. <laughs> it's about 0. 0.2 seconds. <laughs> I'm going to make you watch it again. Well, we're going to have to, because we're too busy laughing to actually hear his point. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. For, for science, for intellectual reasons, we're going to go back to where he starts his profound quote. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, All of creation screams that there's a creator. You can see the genius of God's creative hand through creation. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows his handiwork. He's going to keep talking, yeah. but we got to right, we got to cut it. We'll explain. We've, we've paused a lot so far and it's because he's basically Torek trotting. Okay, so Torek trotting is something that I've named, but it's actually based on gish galloping. Yeah. Gish galloping occurs when someone drops 
as many half truths and just nonsense and just claims well, it's not on even the table. necessarily nonsense it's just claims that the other person may not have either made or heard of or have the evidence on hand to prove yes and it's like you can drop as many of these on the table for them to try and refute um in a very small amount of time knowing that they can't possibly address them all. And it's named after Dwayne Gish, which we'll actually play a video of him in a second to really hammer home what's going on here. But what you're seeing with R Rambling Ray here is the same as what you see with basically anything from Frank Turek. And that is that they take the Gish Gallup technique and, and instead of doing it against an opposition, what they do is they just preach with it. And it's just yeah. so many things being dropped. If, Ray, you've yeah. got, you've got, if, if you're listening to him as a, as mm. a preacher... You have no time to actually process what he said, yeah, because he's already made another claim by the time you've you've heard the first thing that he said. You know, precisely. And if you do actually want to slow him down and start picking it apart, someone's going to accuse you of not letting him finish his sentence. But oh. the thing is, is that if you make a claim, that's where you can pause. It's not about making a sentence finish or a paragraph finish. It's when the claim has been made. And what Ray does is he drops the claim and then makes another claim and then makes another claim. There's no And the sentence hasn't ended yet. <laughs> yeah, so so you do have to pause. Yeah. So what we we'll do, take a look at Gish Galloping. Let's take a look at Gish We're Galloping. We're gonna take a look a good old look at Gish Galloping and uh yeah, it will contextualize why we've got to pause so much. Like Ray Rambling is a very serious problem. To this yeah. uh... would, would, would you would you say uh, go ahead, uh, Bob, Ray. I have two comments here. Uh Phil has stated his belief this is a marvelous universe, a tremendously uh, complex universe. What he doesn't understand about the theory of evolution, the theory of evolution said that this has happened naturally, that we are here as a result of genetic mistakes. As Lauren Isley has said, man is here as a result of millions of DNA accidents. Yeah. That's what evolution is. It's not a divinely guided process. It is a process based on mutations, which are genetic accidents, almost all of which, and I believe all are bad, but certainly most of which are bad, creating all kinds of genetic diseases. And Phil believes that that somehow God used such a process to create man, mm -hmm. when he could have created man instantaneously if he wanted to. Why would he use such a wasteful, inefficient meth method in his creation? But do you to see me, anything wasteful or ineffic inefficient see, about That is contrary uh, to the attributes Phil? of God. Yeah, you see, see what's happening? That will do, yeah. <laughs> that, That'll definitely do. So we've got... Uh, the universe is marvellous. Okay. What, what do you mean by marvellous? Yep. Uh, he says evolution claims how the universe occurred. It yep. doesn't. Uh, he says that um, evolution is just genetic mistakes, but he's ignoring the natural selection part of it. Again, he then says DNA accident, ignoring the natural selection part of mm. it. He says it's not a divinely guided process, but there's many theists out there that will say that it is. Most Christians today accept evolution. Most, yeah. Uh, then for a third time, he restates the genetic accident bit. All mutations are bad. Mm. And then he goes to all mutations cause genetic diseases. So in what's that? less than 40 seconds, yeah. we've got nine claims. Nine claims that are hard to unpack. And also the claims that he makes are like working on people's intuitions. It's like, look, I'll, I'll just pick one. Genetic mistakes. Evolution is not just genetic mistakes. I can't help myself. I want to react. The, what it is, is it's you've got... Replication of DNA failing. Change, change over time. Yeah, allele <laughs> changes, right? And then natural selection is not random. It's the opposite of random, right? Well, There's um, a select, but look, we're doing what well, he wants. We're doing yeah, what yeah, he wants. Right, he wants us to go into... Just real quick is mm. you often find these people use mistake and error because of the negative connotations of that. Don't they map, pal? <laughs> Whereas all it simply is is a change. Yes. That's it. Error in replication isn't yeah, yeah. necessarily Whether or not it's good failure. is determined. We are buying into Gish's yeah, yeah, Gallup. Stop, right, listen, stop, stop. Okay, look. <laughs> this main, is the main, yeah, main point <laughs> is, is he dropped nine claims in, in, what, 40 seconds. It's very, very hard to be able to respond to even one of them in equivalent time. Yeah. So this is a technique that's done by apologists, and it's done to bombard the opposition, and then when the opposition can't possibly respond, they go, see, didn't respond to this, this, and this. How can the atheist possibly not see God's... Sorry. It's because I need an hour and a half all, to get through nine seconds of your content. Yeah, that's, that, that's when they can drop one of the uh, Ray Comfort lines, like, all of creation screams creation. You can see the creation... No, wait, you can see the creator in the creation. Brilliant. I, I want that on the wall. No, I don't want it. This is my wall. We want it on the wall. <laughs> now, um, let's get back to Ray. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's, let's We've got to obviously carry on. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows his handiwork. Obviously, we've gone back a fair bit there and that's because I just want to talk about how God's handiwork 
is always shown as beautiful. They always pick these lovely landscape shots. Why don't we zoom in a little bit and, you know, what's going on in that landscape? Because, frankly, Earth has some horrible things going on. Let, let, let's take this image <laughs> and then make this image zoom in the way that he does. All of creation screams that there's a creator. You can see the genius of God's creative hand through creation. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth shows his handiwork. Now, yeah, it's it's always fascinating. I, I think that the argument from beauty only works if your eyes are closed. Or you're very far away. Yeah, like, because the thing is, is that you see, like, like even the image that he was just showing of this beautiful landscape, and it is beautiful, right? Uh, we've evolved to think it's beautiful because it tends to be a location that has food and resources. Oh, yeah, water. You know. <laughs> yep. this key but one. the thing is, is that as soon as you zoom in and you start looking at what's going on there, there's fish being annihilated by parasites. There's like this entire infrastructure of suffering that would embarrass the most ambitious psychopath, right? It really would. And to think that that's a product of God, like that's what God wanted. It's like, okay, it looks beautiful from the outside, but when you go in and you actually start looking at the details, species whose entire reproductive um, system is predicated on 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 being inside mammals. You know, we said this about like oh, the guinea worm and whatnot. Um, it, there's one that it's in a fish and it eats its tongue and then takes its place. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> this is, this is it. like the naturalist can look at that and go, yeah, yeah it's, it's, really, perfectly really, fine. it's really awful, but it's what you would expect to see. What you would expect to see, like the gravity thing, what you would expect to see. <laughs> would you expect to see a parasite take over the fish of a tongue? Uh, if there the was tongue an all powerful fish. tongue of a fish, yes. If it was an all powerful, all loving God. I'm not so sure about that. Certainly not the all loving part. No. But anyway. <laughs> But to have faith in God means to trust in His integrity, to believe and trust in His exceeding great and precious promises that are in the Bible. I guess we're done with all the intellectual reasons. Yes, he's okay. He's put intellectual reasons on the table, and he's now moving to faith. Yeah, and the intellectual reasons, just to be clear, was um, because we can see nature exists, yeah. we can intellectually believe in God. You can see the creator in, in the creation. creation. Yes. That was it. That, um, that was all we had as intellectual evidence, essentially. That's it. But now he's moving and he's giving us his definition of faith. Okay, fair enough. And his, but Not fair enough, because his definition of faith is was, very peculiar. It was trust in promises in the Bible. Okay, well... Which it, narrows faith down to exclusively Christians. Yeah, it means trust in the promises of the Bible uh, regardless of whether or not there's sufficient reason to believe in it. And also, where it's like specifically in reference to the Bible, let's be charitable, right? And like say, okay, it's not just to the Bible. Otherwise, like his definition of faith only relates to the Bible. Like, surely, and which Bible is another matter. As and well, which Bible? <laughs> yeah, precisely. And on, on on which interpretation of those promises? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, let's just say that he's saying for now. I think we're still manning him. He's saying that faith is trust in promises. Which is a but, odd description that I've not heard before, but I, we'll roll with it. We'll that. roll with it, but it's also, I don't know about you, but when I trust someone's promise, I do so for intellectual reasons. I usually, <laughs> when you know, when we set the plans for today, yeah, uh, I trusted that you were going to show up. Yeah. My reasonings being, you wanted to make this video. Yes. <laughs> Which is intellectual. See, it, I, it, this, this is the conflation You're thing. already yeah, at a problem. Just, but... All right, well, let's go on. There are plenty of things in which we trust. We trust pilots, we trust taxi drivers, we trust dentists with our teeth, surgeons to operate on us. Listen to this very famous Bible verse, Hebrews 11, chapter 6. No, we've got to pause him again, because he's about to go on again. Uh, and just skipping yeah. by how terrible the editing is once again. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ray, you, you haven't said anything there. You've just said we trust in things. Yeah. That's all you've done is you, you, you're moving on to your next point as such, I'm, what I'm assuming is going to be a point anyway, and all you've said is, we trust in dentists, we trust in pilots, and we trust in God. And what gets me is the examples that he used, right? So you're an aircraft technician, mm -hmm. so why do you trust pilots? Well, having worked on aircraft, they're bloody complicated. Yeah. Um, I might, at a stretch, be able to start one. I certainly couldn't bloody fly one. Yeah. Uh, so I trust that a pilot who works for an airline has been through the adequate training in order to, you know, get it off the ground and hopefully back down again. Yeah. 
So empirical evidence, intellectual yeah. reason. Yeah. So raise but examples even, of trust. Even without um, being a technician, yeah. most people know yeah. these things are hard to fly. They require years of training. Yeah, yeah, totally. If you said to me, do I do I think that he's going? Why do I trust a pilot? It's for the reasons that you're you're, you're saying, just with less knowledge, of, like everything in that in that sector. So it's not just because he's called pilot. No, it's not no. just because he's called pilot, and I don't promise him because he just says, "Listen, mate, I'll be able to get you to the other way." No, <laughs> no, it's, be, it's for intellectual reasons. So raise examples of trust. Oh, I'm also here as well. I want to give you another thing. Yeah, yeah. We we have examples of pilots existing. We yes. have examples of people who that become helps. pilots. That helps. We don't have examples of a god, so we no, we, we that, trust that in helps. things that we know exist. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, we don't know a god exists, so how do we then trust that? Yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> that's true. another yeah, aspect that's to it. But the main point here is that his examples of trust come down to intellectual reasons. Yeah. yeah. It's not how he defined it, but it's the examples he's given. Yes. And mm. obviously, his definition of belief was with intellectual reason. <laughs> so, okay, so, so faith means trust, mm-hmm. and trust means belief, mm-hmm. which is intellectual. Yes, but they are different. But they're different. Listen to this very famous Bible verse, Hebrews 11, chapter 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. All right, so he's moving on again, but no, we're going to pause him and his gish gallop and we're going to deal with his (laughs) claim. Well, I need a drink. I don't know if this is even a claim at this point. I don't actually know if you can call it a claim. All he's done is just bring up Hebrews on screen. Yes, um, and read it out, and he thinks it's relevant to his own definition. But, but that begins with a but. Yeah, so that begins with a but. So, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So, I imagine it's probably best that we look up why there's a but and what the start of this chapter actually says. Yeah, let's bring up Hebrews eleven. All right, so top of Hebrews eleven, it says, "Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen." Which I would read as uh, things that you want to have, but you don't necessarily have evidence for. Yes. Which that, you... I think that's a interpretation and relates to my definition yes, I gave at the start exactly. of the video. It also relates, because <laughs> I've had this verse quoted at me a few times, that is what they mean by it. Yeah. They are really get and like this whole, the, uh, Hebrews 11 is quite clear on this as well. The definition that they give for this is along those lines. Yeah. But belief without needing to see the evidence. That's it. So let's then take what this uh, verse that he's put on screen actually says. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that is, if you want to make God happy, don't look for reasons to believe. Close your ears to challenges. Learning is bad. Yeah, which is just, that's just intellectual suicide. But to be fair, that's in the Bible. That's not race fault. No, no, that's not race fault. That is in the yeah. Bible. So... Yeah, if you want to make God happy, don't learn things. Hold on. so th- Okay, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. But what about those Christians that think that they've got rational reason to believe in God? Then they've made him unhappy. Then they've made God unhappy. Yeah. Great. But it does say uh, he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Right. So if you look for reasons to believe, you yeah. will be rewarded. Okay. Wait, what? Okay, so, yeah. hang on. Well, the best case scenario for a person, then, depends yeah. on what you want. Do you just want to make God happy and get nothing out of it? <laughs> yeah. In which case, just believe for the hell of it. But if you want something, don't worry about pissing God off. Look for him. Because just, well done, you'll, you'll be rewarded, mm-hmm. but you will have annoyed him. Wait, that means I'm going to heaven and Ray's going to hell? Yes. Fair. So because, well, yeah, because you've obviously... I'm spent, looking. Yeah, you're looking. You, so I'm going to get the diligent reward. I think we've just read the Bible better than Ray probably did. Oh, <laughs> so this is we've great. tried harder. Yeah, thanks. It's great. Wow. <laughs> that's the intellectual belief in the existence of God. Only a fool would deny the existence of God, and that's what the Bible says. No. you. Well, you've just said faith is the non-intellectual belief. Yeah, yeah. So... And that and that quote there, by the way, it, if you if you look for God, oh. you make him unhappy. Well, that well that would surely be the anti-intellectual belief in God. Yes. <laughs> you see, he's just conflating every. He's not saying anything. <laughs> well, no, like, he is. He's just confusing the words. He's he he's said, saying everything. <laughs> he's, he's, he said they're different. Yeah. But now he's just used because he was talking about faith, yeah. and now he's just said faith is the intellectual belief. 
Yeah, and he's... Ju- which he said he, earlier wasn't. He began by saying you've got belief, which is intellectual. Yeah. And then you've got faith, which is trust. Which is... Again, which is trust is belief and belief is intelligence. Yeah. I just... But... But look at the audience, man. But what he's just said as well, yeah, yeah. not only contradicts what he said earlier in the video, it contradicts the start of Hebrews, or start of Hebrews 11. Yeah. Because that's said... Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh... uh yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it up for you. So Hebrews 11, at the re- very top, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, so when you're looking for intellectual reasons to believe, yeah. you're contradicting that. Yes. Yeah. So he's, so, he's, so he's misusing the Bible. He's misusing the Bible. Genius. That's the intellectual belief in the existence of God. Only a fool would deny the existence of God, and that's what the Bible says. Yes, of course it says that. <laughs> Of course it does. This is something that you find in all cults. It's a religion. It's a religion. They say, yeah. <laughs> Basically, anyone who doesn't believe what you believe is an idiot. Yep. And yeah, if someone doesn't believe what you believe... You it's see not just you, religion, it's no, also you, politics. Yeah, you see, you, see, yeah, you see this in ideologies. If people don't believe in the same set of propositions that you do, then uh, they're bad people, they're evil people, they are fools. Um, it's just othering. That's it's all just, it is. It's just the othering. It's just so tribal. Would you expect this tribal nonsense... From an all-powerful, all-loving God. Because well, I wouldn't. That would be one of the predictions that I would think you wouldn't see. Which is one of the reasons that I think that if there is a God, and you can get there with kalam type arguments or whatnot, it definitely, definitely isn't the God of Abraham. No. Well, I, I certainly would wonder if um, Ray would accept being called a fool because he doesn't believe in Allah. Yes. I, I, I'd assume well, he'd have to. The Quran says it, I'm sure. I don't know if it does. I haven't read it. I don't care. Almost certainly. But... <laughs> and what he would do is he'd probably look at it and go, no, they actually have the right God. It's the God of Abraham. But they, they just they just bastardized the text. <laughs> they just like added their own thing. And it's like, this coming from Christians... <laughs> who have frequently added their own who thing. Who took the fact... Jews' work and did exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're fools. Yeah. We're fools. Game over. He's beat us there, mate. Right, we're, we're out. Done. Let's just go have a drink. I've had enough now. <laughs> Moving on. But listen to the second part of that verse. And that is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. To please him, we must believe that he is and trust that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I I can't... God, you've got to... (laughs) You've got to believe intellectually, but with faith, which is not with the intellectually. So confusion there i really don't understand what you're saying anymore ray and then once you believe intellectually trust intellectually that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him ray has mastered the bible because what just use words however you feel like (laughs) how many ways could you interpret ray after this minute and a half of him talking because that's what the bible has it has this this multiplicity of interpretations, all of them is hard to tell which is right on certain topics. He's he's really read his book. He knows what he's doing. He, he knows how to practice what's in that book. But I would really want to question, is God a rewarder of those who diligently seek them, him, even if they haven't uh, come to belief? True. I mean, like... To put, because, put... because it doesn't say that you have to believe to be rewarded. It just says you have to diligently seek. So there will be ways that they will define the diligently seeking as to be like seeking with faith, which doesn't make sense, I agree, but there's ways that they can do it. And there's other ways that you can read this, like Bible reading classes. They're going to find a way to read whatever they want. But yeah, it, it it's an interesting tree to bark up, right? Because um, all the jokes aside, I do genuinely spend a hell of a lot of time reading. Uh, I've read the Bible, I've read the Quran, you know, I've spent all this time investigating the best arguments for them from, you know, like the teleological arguments with Paley, uh, the argument from probability, fine tuning, things like this, moral arguments, the Kalam and its most recent literature. Like I'm genuinely seeking and, and genuinely I would accept if there's a God, I'd be happy to accept that, but But there's just, I don't see it. That's obviously obviously on the intellectual side of it. If we're going on the emotional side of it, wanting to emotionally seek a God. Yes. There's been times in my life where I've done that on account of, you know, know, especially when I was younger, I lost family members and stuff. Yeah. And I never found a God. Mm. I did find nature being an absolute bitch. Yes. But I never found a God. So do I still get rewarded 
for mm-hmm. seeking with my heart, but not finding it. They they may define it as that because seeking with your heart would be closer to their faith definition that they would run with. But that's my point. But I still haven't found faith. No. I still haven't found any belief. No, which means you haven't pleased him. Yeah. But it does mean that you've also uh, uh you're going to get rewarded. So. But that's my question. It's yeah, yeah. like even though I've done it through rather than looking for reasons, rather than looking for intellectual, I've done it from the heart. I still haven't come to the conclusion they want. Do I? S- well, where I does w- that work? Yeah. No. <laughs> I will say this. <laughs> I've never met a Christian that doesn't think that he's going to heaven. (laughs) So I think it depends on who you ask. If you find an intellectual Christian, then they're going to tell you that it's seeking intellectually. If you find one that's uh, that's, uh, like Ray and seemingly allergic to intelligence, Mm. like honestly, the... Yeah. Right, well, let's see, because I I really want to know what else he has to say on this. so. So there is the believe intellectually and trust in his integrity. Yeah, but you, integrity. You, you, told, yeah, but you, you told us just a moment ago that trust is intellectual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Belief, which is intelligence, and faith, which is intelligence. Ray, I don't know what you're saying. You haven't really given us any uh, separation between these uh, Genuinely, two. by saying everything, he's saying nothing. Yeah. That is, like... Oh, uh, just continue. Yeah. Faith is the oxygen by which we live as Christians. Let me share something very personal with you. Many years ago, when those nasal strips became very popular, that sit across the top of the nose, that open the airway. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> if you put pig on screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're crying out loud. Right, we'll go back again. This works really well for the Gish Gallop. If you make someone laugh, they really can't follow what you're saying. Yeah, we've got to go back because I don't know your point anymore because I've just started laughing at your video. i got to say, it's just, <laughs> yes, let's do this. Let me share something very personal with you. Many years ago, when those nasal strips became very popular, that sit across the top of the nose, that open the airways about 40%. So a lot of celebrity sporting stars wore them when they were playing and they became very popular. So myself and many of my friends would use them because they'd help them sleep well at night. But I found something was low cost and you could use it again and again. It was a small plastic device that did exactly the same thing. But sometime last year, something very strange began to happen. For about two weeks, I struggled at night to breathe. What I'd done two weeks earlier is waved it over the soap before I washed it. I'd never done that before. It had hardened and blocked that little nasal thing. My pain was self-inflicted. And there is something that will deprive you of your oxygen as a Christian. It is self-inflicted, it's very subtle, and it can be fatal. It's something that I call analytic perfectionism. Bloody Nora, we had a minute long of one of the most laborious analogies I have ever heard, (laughs) only to get to (laughs) analytic perfectionism, which I'm assuming he means critical thinking. (laughs) Yeah, thinking. Like, it's it's poisonous to Christians, you know. Um, But what what did we have there? The first minute and a half, right, his BPS was off the chart. Bullshit per second, okay? (laughs) The next minute... It's just been like an old, like a, a, just a story. He could have said this. He could have said this. He could have went, listen, some of the things that you suffer in life are self-inflicted. But instead, he gave us a minute of uh, what was of it? him hang smothering on, how... his, his thing there's... with soap. Hang on, no, I, I want to make sure we've got the analogy nailed down. Yeah. So there's a thing that athletes use to help their breathing. Mm-hmm. And some people like to use that to help them sleep. Yes. But he didn't buy that thing. He bought a different thing. <laughs> That did help him sleep for a little while until he cleaned it with soap and then it didn't help him sleep anymore. (laughs) And this is analogous to uh, overanalyzing things. This is overanalyzing. Wait, wait. Does does he mean (laughs) overanalyzing as in like just having sufficient reason for your beliefs? Or does he mean like genuinely overanalyzing? Well, I suppose we're going to get to that in a second. Yeah, let's, let's, (laughs) let's, let's, let's hear him. Wow. What a poor analogy. Let me read to you from Proverbs 3 verse 5. I don't like that quote. Yeah, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Be ignorant. Be well, stupid. That's quite insulting. Yeah, it is insulting. I know plenty of really smart Christians. Like that's that's ridiculous. Well, that, that but it's says, in the Bible. Just believe, hmm. don't try to learn. Yeah. That's what that is. That is straight up what that says. And lean not to your own understanding. Well, Here's an analogy for you, Ray. I'm sure I'll do better than you. 
the architects of of old, all our sort of medieval architects that have built, you know, those churches and those amazing cathedrals, they wouldn't have been able to do that without understanding. <laughs> They needed some rudimentary knowledge of physics, how stones and the arches can form to to yep. uh, support the weight above them. If they didn't have that understanding, the churches, the cathedrals would collapse. But surely they should have just trusted that God would have made them work. Yeah, no, I, I like that. So what you're saying is that you've got this irony of them using their intellect mm. to build these great cathedrals to go in and preach about not having intellect. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Use knowledge to tell people not to use their knowledge. Yes. Oh, I hate to see what Ray's going to be doing with this quote. Let's go. Let's do this. Go on. Let's see this catastrophe. Trust on the Lord with all your heart. There's what to do. And then it says that warning, and lean not to your own understanding. It's saying, don't try and figure things out. Just trust the Lord like a little child trusts their father. Holy shit. <laughs> he just said that. Yeah, d- just d- <laughs> don't think. Be like a little child. I trust. <laughs> I trusted my father for intellectual reasons, not for faith. I, I don't think. Obviously, I, I was worried earlier that we'd been uncharitable yeah. towards him because yeah, yeah, yeah. we, we, you know, we've very much been hammering on this. Oh, just be stupid, sort of thing. Mm. But now he's literally just said that. Word for word. We're going to make you listen to that again. Yeah. That was... It, we were having much pain and you will have some as well. Trust on the Lord with all your heart. There's what to do. And then it says that warning and lean not to your own understanding. And saying, don't try and figure things out. Just trust the Lord like a little child trusts their father. <laughs> wow. Just Wow. I'm not sure what else could be said on that. He, he's just told his audience, mm. be stupid. I have never before seen anyone actively encourage their audience to be thick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ray has just done it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I am genuinely a bit lost for words. I mean, I have seen this type of type of Christianity where, oh, it's just it's so toxic. Like... And also, I just, I can't get my head around the fact that he's just used the all these words interchangeably. He's equivocated multiple times. And again, the reason I trust my father, or trusted my father while he was alive to throw me around, until I was around 12, then he couldn't do it, <laughs> is for the same reason I trust air pilots. I've got reasonable expectation based on sufficient reason and evidence. It's got nothing to do with believing for no reason whatsoever. In fact, whenever I've done that in my life, I've been kicked in the teeth. It's a bad thing to do. Um, th- this is exactly what you'd it's, expect to see from someone that does not have the truth. It is look, exactly cult-like. It's infantilizing. Yeah. D- d- literally so. Yeah. Be a child. Be a child. I can't think of anything positive mm. that encourages someone not to be a grown-up. Not to think about things, not to learn. Don't even question it. Now that's the antithesis of what the world thinks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, of, of course, it doesn't work that it's way. It's the antithesis of what he thinks when it comes to any other domain of discourse. Well, yeah, the, the very foundation of the the world we have today comes from attempting to understand it. Yeah. I carry on. You're Nothing else to say. No. Just like wow. Years ago, I was invited to Washington, D.C. by a group of atheists. They wanted to interview me for an hour to find out what made me tick. It was kind of like a psychologist's couch. At the beginning of the interview, they grabbed this verse and put it up as a warning to other atheists. They didn't see that as a positive, they saw it as a very negative thing, not to lean to your own understanding. They were saying, this is a very dangerous thing to do. It is. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is, is. is well, genuinely. Ray, what you are suggesting people do is the death of critical thinking. It's the end of it. <laughs> and he's been quoting the Bible at us, which means he's learned to read the Bible. <laughs> I mean, like, according, he's contradicting himself. You're not allowed to do that. Not, that. That's intellectual. That's not faith. You should have faith in in the people that can read Latin, which you can't. 
So what he wants us to do is to go back to a time before Alfred the Great where most people couldn't read the Bible. You could only read the Bible if you spoke Latin and those that spoke Latin or were taught Latin were only those who uh, sufficiently was jerking off the church. Yeah, but even then, they learned Latin. So yeah. they shouldn't be allowed to... That's it. They were contradicting, themselves. contradicting themselves. They are not pleasing God. But they will go to heaven. <laughs> but right... Let's go even more basic. Let's go even further back in time to the point that man had the ideas to come up with tools. Mm. Breaking a coconut open with a rock requires understanding that the rock is harder than the coconut. Should have had faith, mate. Ray, you're not allowed to break open that coconut because you have to have faith that God would do it for you. You should have had promise in the <laughs> coconut opening itself for you. And, uh, you know, like you had the promise of your father. Like, it's just... As you can see, you you can't do anything. You cannot function as a human being without any understanding. Which is why he only wants to apply this to his faith. Yeah. Everything else, question. You must not question his faith. Yes. Everything else, it's important to be able to investigate it. But not his God. We call this special pleading. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I had a very dear friend who suffered from the disease of analytic perfectionism. He would analyze everything. If I had have said to him, how do you know your mother is really your mother? He would have gone on a two month study of the thing. And I'd have applauded him for actually considering how to adequately answer that question. Yes. Also, the, the disease of critical thinking. Of critical thinking. <laughs> the disease of being sceptical. The disease of actually questioning those in power. I mean, but if someone has a question for you that you don't have an immediate answer for, hmm. it's perfectly fine to go away and go, right, well, why do I think this? Why do yep. I trust this? Yep. Let's have a look. And if it takes you two months to do that, fine. At least yeah. you've thought about it. Yeah, you, you thought about it. And, you know, the other thing is, is that you, when you do start thinking in this way, as someone that has this disease of critical thinking... um. You end up becoming satisfied with not actually knowing. Because you kind of realise, with like problem of induction and things like this, you realise that you can't actually know anything with certainty. And then all you can have is levels of credence, depending on how, how much the claim is forcing you to buy into an ontology. So, for instance, if someone wanted me to believe that the Earth was flat, then I'm going to require a lot of evidence to be able to get there. Right, because it's quite quite the thing to to believe in in this day and age. Yeah. Whereas if I needed to or I wanted to ask whether or not my mother is my mother, well, there's only a certain level that you that you can get to where you'd be happy. My mum tells me that she's my mother. Okay, does that prove it? No. My dad says so. Does that prove it? No. I've got reasonable expectation to trust my dad, but no, it doesn't. But get this you is there. where he's saying trust comes into it. You don't need to prove it. Yes, and this is it, and it's like, fine, but this is where he's using trust so broadly. Trust means here, right, which is where yeah, he's using faith. But when you ask, faith. why do you trust? Yeah. You're now looking for a reason. Yeah, but the other thing is, is that he's defining trust, faith, which he's equivocating, right? He's defining it as just not being 100% certain. Hmm. In this case, everyone has faith in everything. Because yeah. you can't be 100% certain with everything. And what they tend to do is they go, look, you have faith that your mother is your mother. Yeah. I have faith that God exists. No, I have really good reason to believe that my mother is my mother. Lots yeah, and the, lots of, of the, independent, verifiable sources, the, right? They're, they're, pre they're pretending that there's no uh, sort of big gap between those two things. Yeah, they're like, you're doing it, I'm doing it, we're equal. No. Uh, one simple thing that you can start with for why I trust that my mother is my mother is I can fucking point to her and show her that she's there. <laughs> you know? yeah, I but... can't do that so easily with God. And the other thing is you'll see like the genetic similarities, won't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, being bold runs quite a lot in my family. Widow's Peak, just like um, my dad. Skin colour's the skin same. Skin colour, eye colour. Yeah, the fact that I couldn't um, grow a beard. I can now. Shh. Okay. <laughs> uh, until, I, until I hit 30. Yeah. You just stole some of mine, which it's all stuff. It's very like true. This is why we're friends. <laughs> I mean, how do you know your mother is your mother? She could have picked you up at a hospital. How do you really know? And it really comes down to you do believe what they've told you. I raised you as my son. You were born at such and such a hospital. This is your mother. This is your father. It comes back to simple childlike trust. You can't know for certain. So, therefore, you have faith. But it's not just trust. No. Like you were saying, there's, there's reasons behind. <laughs> I, I, every single time I'm messing up with this thing, you carry on, my friend. I, to, be, look, to be honest, you've covered it. 
and so yeah. have I in a way. If if someone asks you a question as to why do you trust mm. something, thinking of reasons to that question isn't overanalyzing. No. That's all I want to say on that, I think. Well, there's another thing, actually. You, you, you make me think of this, and that is that there's a context to be considered, okay? So if you wanted me to believe that my mother isn't my, my mother, or that she is my mother... Um, and of course, we're using the biological sense of mother here rather than you know the person who's paternal and has looked after you. But if if you want to stress on that horn, then finding out that my mother is not my mother is going to have some some corrosion on my worldview. It's going to change the way that my worldview is, mm-hmm. but not enormously. Okay, not it's certainly much. not going to get me to start buying into supernatural things and things like that. Okay. It's, it's a natural thing. It can happen. Fair enough. Whereas if you wanted to convince me that God exists, you switch my entire worldview, everything that I understand. Mm. So obviously, it's a, lot, it's, it's a much taller order to be able to do. Which is why it's so hard to convince people, whether they're religious or non-religious, yeah. of the other yeah. side being yeah. true. Because it requires again. a total switch in your, your mindset. Yeah, like believing that the earth is flat. That would require a, 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 quite the evidence because mm. it would be such a change in the way in which I see the world. But yeah, carry on. Even a DNA test comes back to my faith in its results. Do I trust it? Yeah, see, he's just saying everything in life is based on trust because we don't know anything for certain. That's all he's saying. Yeah, that's, that is, yeah, there's, there's not much really else to be said there. But the genetic thing did get me thinking, right? Um, so when I was young, um, my mother was an alcoholic and she said to me that my dad isn't my dad, right? So I ended up... What uh, a thing to say to a child. My my mum did some really nasty things, right? Um, But what she said to me... Yeah, she said that. And my dad said to me, okay, Steve, you know what? We'll we'll get a genetic test, okay? Because obviously, you know, it's causing you distress. I was a young kid, right? And I was worried about it. And I hadn't really thought about what it is to be a father. It's got nothing to do with biology. It has got everything to do with whether or not they look after you. That's it. Um, So... Unless you're going to define father as necessary, biological, fine, you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I can't help it. It's the semantic warrior in me. <laughs> okay, but what, what happened is he said to me, you know, do, do you want to do the test? It was a lot of money at the time. And I said, uh, it was just at the time we were about to do it, because I said yes at first. And then I said no, because I had thought about it enough to realize it doesn't matter. Genuinely doesn't matter at all. Uh, but no, that just reminded me, because he brought up the, the DNA test thing. But if the DNA test came back and he said that he is my father... Uh, would that have been 100% truth? Or would I still have had to have had faith? Um, with with this really broad definition of faith, of course I would still have to have faith because it's so faith broad. Faith that the, the results are true. Faith that the results are true. Yeah. Faith that I'm being told the truth by by these people. Like When, when you're at this point, the, mm. the term faith and trust here, they're, they're just basically meaningless. Yeah, exactly. What's it? Um, Incredibles. When everyone's super, no one is. Bingo. <laughs> when everything's faith, nothing When, when is. you say everything, you say nothing. <laughs> so if your conversion to Christ was merely intellectual, all it will take is an intellectual atheist or a skeptic to talk you out of it. Intellectual atheists do this. We point and shout at the screen angrily. <laughs> Ray, what are you doing, man? This is awful. I just... It's... uh. Well, this is othering again, isn't it? As you're portraying your opponent. Yeah, it's as... like you want to present your opposition in a you know respectful way. Like apparently, being intellectual is a bad thing now. Yeah, and it's such you know, so that he has to portray it with an angry, an angry person pointing at the screen, being you know cantankerous. It's like okay, you know, we're not only are we fools, we're angry and we're intelligent. Intelligence <laughs> is is a bad thing here. Like that's what's being thrown on. Because we suffer from the disease of critical thinking. The disease of critical thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. out, outside of just mocking what he's done in the, the presentation aspect there, let's actually go through what, what he said, which boils down to don't have reasons for your belief, because if you do, someone might be able to counter those reasons and convince you otherwise. Yeah. Ray, this is one of the most intellectually dishonest things I have ever seen yeah it, it, you, it's you've said utterly intellectually bankrupt yeah you, you've just said don't give anyone anything to challenge you with yeah it's like what sam harris was saying that if you don't have 
Um, what reason can you present to somebody who doesn't value reason? What logic can yeah. you present to somebody who doesn't value logic? Nothing. If you met a flat earther and you said, why is it that you believe that the earth is flat? And their response to you was, I don't have any beliefs. I don't have any reasons. Because if I did, then you'd be able to challenge me. Like, what kind of respect would that person get? But no, it's done in the context of religion. And so this is perfectly fine. And even like those that are intellectual Christians, they don't call this stuff out. No. Uh, I mean, the worst thing that you get from this, though, is if someone says, well, I believe in God, and you say to them why, they can't give you an answer. Mm -hmm. They just go, well, I just do. Yeah. And if you're at the point of just going, well, I just do, as an answer to any question, Mm. why do you believe in anything at that point? You've got nothing. Imagine it from an atheist perspective as well. It's like, you don't believe in God? No. What's your reasons for that? Don't have any. I just don't have any. Don't have any. Well, okay, you got any logic for it? No. No, 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 no. I've got faith. Just, just, just pure faith and I, I that's it like i just there is not anything else to say other than just ray's ideal christian is someone who's brain dead on a hospital bed yeah because they can't think about anything yep. that's it they're gonna please god they're gonna please god by being brain dead but if you came to christ because you trusted the promises of god and the power of god transformed you and made you a new creature in christ so that you love that which you once hated and hate that which you now love then no one will shake your faith sorry <laughs> the edits <laughs> <laughs> sorry no it's fine it's fine <laughs> so if you come to god without thinking no one can challenge you because you have no reasons to be challenged yeah, he's just reiterating it. He's just well, he's just repeating himself. He's not, <laughs> he's not saying a lot. And and what he's obviously repeating is awful. Yeah, <sighs> question everything but the shape of the earth. Question. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> this is just painful. I don't like it. Does it, does that mean that he's meant to question um the slavery in the Bible or just accept it? Well, um. Obviously, a lot of Christians try to rationalise it. They say Ooh. slavery in the Bible mm. is not the, the slavery that we saw in the North Atlantic slave trade. Yeah, they ignore about five or six different references but, to slavery and focus on just two to get their interpretation. Yeah, so they're trying to interpret it. But as soon as you try to interpret it, as soon as you try to rationalise, you're, you're, making, gonna... you're making God angry. Yeah, you're not going to please God. Just accept slavery is fine. Yeah. I mean, if, you, what ta- the Bible if you take a straight read of the Bible, it definitely definitely endorses slavery yeah you have to really bend over backwards to say that it doesn't listen to first peter jesus christ whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls i just had like two minutes of him telling you that believing without thinking makes you and god happy yeah, he's just he's just repeating the same thing, really. And, uh, well, we've it's, said our piece. It, yeah, it's just more of ignorance is bliss. He's just taking That's another quote is. from the Bible to try and emphasize what he thinks is the correct interpretation. This is tiring. Yep. Let's get on with it. Hear what Scripture says? Yet believing you rejoice. If you've got no faith in the promise of God, you'll have no joy. Remember, trust is the oxygen by which the Christian lives. Listen to Scripture's warning. This is from the Amplified Bible. Take care, brothers and sisters, that there not be in any one of you a wicked, unbelieving heart which refuses to trust and rely on the Lord, a heart that turns away from the living God. All right, I will... I'll Google it. I'll bite. Let's check it out because he's changed his version of the Bible. I mean, I don't know what he was using before, but it wasn't the Amplified. It definitely wasn't the Amplified. It's not... It's not... No, it's not... What did he say? Three... One. (laughs) Ray. Ray. You've misquoted the Bible. It's 312. (laughs) It's Hebrews 312. It's 312. But he's... Ray's got it wrong. If he had used some intelligence, then he wouldn't have got it. Maybe he just picked the number with faith. Maybe. It's, yeah, it's, okay, Ray, okay, Ray, clearly, Ray can't quote the Bible. Fair enough. He's misquoted the Bible, but he's clearly picked the amplified version to try and yes. cram in his definition of trust. Yeah, I'm going to look up King James version. Um, Steve, what was his definition of trust again? Oh, trust is, sorry, faith is trust. Trust is belief, and belief is intellectual. Right, and they are different, different, but they're different. Cool. Right, just so we all remember. Right, King James version. 
Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Well, now that's quite so all a bit that, different. So all that's saying is just about not believing is wicked, essentially. Yeah. That's all that says. That's what it's saying. But the... What's, what's yeah. he using? The Amplified... That's the Amplified is inserting his trust into the... Yeah, but he said trust and belief are different, and he's now ser- inserting trust into belief. He's found... Yeah, he's used the Amplified because they've used the word trust That's it. with belief, whereas actually the original... Well, the King James Version, it's, they're just basically bashing unbelievers again. That's it. It's just Bible bashing. It's a Bible bashing verse where they call unbelief evil because... Yeah. It is what it is. But he yeah, he's chosen the amplified just so that because it uses the word trust in brackets. Yeah, so but again it's and, and he's conflating the trust and belief yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's he screwing starts up. off saying intel- belief and faith are different, and then everything afterwards he's just he's just fused them together. And no one in his comment section seems to give a crap. All right, con- continue. I, I can't take much more of this. We are going to have to stop soon. <laughs> yeah, like th- yeah, this is this is painful. Unbelief, a lack of trust is a quietly subtle sin. They kept Israel going round and round the wilderness. For 40 years, they wouldn't trust the Lord. Zechariah was struck dumb because he wouldn't trust the Lord. And remember what Jesus said to those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He said, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Sorry, I'm going to look this one up. Are you still using the Amplified, Ray? I'm not sure. That's that's two he's got wrong. He's got it wrong again. <laughs> he's, he's, hang on, yeah. He said it's Luke 24, 26. It's not. It's Luke 24, 25. Ray. I mean, oh, bro. I mean, it's not the end of the world, I guess. But, no. you know, he really is showing that he's not using intelligence. No, no, he's he's nailing yep. that. He is consistent he's on that consistent. one thing. Consistent. At being so the Bible says, yes. "O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets that have spoken." It's just again a diss on like people that don't yeah. that aren't convinced. What does the Bible say on fools that are slow of brain? <laughs> I find right one of the most obvious. You know, at the beginning he brought up gravity, yeah, and he was saying that you can use. He believes in God for the same reason he believes in gravity. Mm. One of the things I would expect from an all loving, all powerful God, or what rephrase it this way, one of the things I would not expect is this stupidity on focusing on those who are unbelievers who are not convinced i i think this is such an obvious sign that this is written by men in power about power it's about it's it's just it's it's so obviously not divinely inspired like this is tripe when you just it's just the other's bad the other's bad the other's bad it's we are fools not to believe what the scriptures say may i pluck out my right eye before I deem God as being untrustworthy. What's amazing here is we're obviously we're fools not to believe, but in order to believe we need to trust. Yeah. But you can only trust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can only trust what you believe. So in order to believe, you need to trust that God is honest in his book, but in order to have trust in God, you need to believe that God is real. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't believe God is untrustworthy, yeah. and it's not because I believe in God, it's because I don't believe a God is <laughs> exists yeah. i don't believe he's trustworthy i don't believe he's untrustworthy i don't believe he's real so how can i trust his word that the bible is accurate i can't reese look do you trust bigfoot <laughs> okay absolutely or is it that you need to believe he exists before you can assign whether or not you trust him okay <laughs> because if he doesn't exist his promises aren't promises <laughs> right but if you're not convinced of bigfoot then just just recognize that all of the footprints scream <laughs> Bigfoot. You can see Bigfoot, Bigfoot in, in the, the footprints. footprints. We're making that a t-shirt. Yeah. I'm just saying. We're making it a t-shirt. That's good. But th- this this rhetoric only works on a certain type of person, and they need two things in place. The One first, of them is not a brain. The first is belief in God, yeah. and two is the willingness to throw away critical thinking. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Which Because is the, not a the brain moment part. you think about the sentence he just said, yeah. you get my situation. You cannot trust that which you don't believe. Yeah. Just the thought of not trusting it makes me feel physically sick. In the same way, if I said to my wife, Honey, I don't trust you, what an insult that would be to her integrity. Okay. I trust in my girlfriend, (laughs) and the reason I trust her is for intellectual reasons. I don't just trust her for no reason whatsoever. It is intellectual, okay? She has time time, time and time again delivered on her promises. She, I... 
I mean, we've said all this, right? There's no point in reiterating it. It's just, uh, right now, he's just preaching at the choir, and it's worked, right? 140,000 views, and the comments Again, are... he, he's not... We're six minutes in, and he's managed he, to say about two things. Yeah, six minutes in, he said... Yeah, and the rest of it's just been repeated. Yeah, all he said in six minutes, he's not said anything, right? It the, is, uh, in, yeah. The two the two things are, uh, you belief is intellectual. Yep. Faith is trust, and trust is belief, which is intellectual, and they're different. Yep. And then the other thing is, don't think. Yeah, that's all he said. That's so all so he his said. yeah, really, his title of the video is "Do this, and your faith will crumble." Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> if you think your faith will crumble, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> Evil atheists are coming. <laughs> think of the fruit of unbelief. David sinned horribly, took another man's wife, and then had him killed because of unbelief. He didn't believe that God would hold him accountable. Same with Judas. Same with Adam. They didn't believe they'd be held accountable. Ray, have you got proof of them being held accountable? No, that would require intelligence. That will require reasoning. It will require That's true. investigation. You've just got to trust that just they've trust been held it, just trust it. accountable. That's all you want. If the enemy can't get you from without, he'll get you from within. He will send a Trojan horse of doubting demons. <laughs> Trojan horse. Sorry, sorry. I've got to pause it here, right? Look. It's fine. <laughs> He's got a Trojan horse to represent someone getting you to question things. They're getting in. They're getting in the back of your brain. They're in. And they're going to make, make you evil. They're making me question things. And all of a sudden, <laughs> out of nowhere, I'm now an angry atheist. <laughs> Who whisper, has God said, seeds of doubt will in time become cursed weeds that choke our faith. Unbelief is a tiny hole in a balloon that deflates our trust in God. I, I love it. The almighty, all-powerful God can be defeated by the pinprick of just a little bit of critical thinking. May you and I dash any thoughts of unbelief, a lack of faith in the promises of God as quickly as we would dash an adulterous thought. Adultery is a blatant sin. Unbelief is a subtle soap in the nasal dilator. <laughs> it all makes sense now. This is, this is why he did a video, what, an, a minute straight talking about that. The inspiration for this video was he had that no, nasal dilator thing and he got some soap in it. That was the entire inspiration. I've got the idea that he's, he's like sat down at 4 a.m. and he can't sleep and his nose hurts and he goes, I'm going to turn this into a beautiful thing. I'm going to write a script. I tell people not to think because if they did think and if I did think I would have figured out that I put bloody soap on the thing. <laughs> Should have just had faith. How did hang on, how did he figure out that there was soap in it was causing him the problem? Surely that's overanalyzing. Yeah, he overanalyzed. If in fact the reason he can talk about it at all is because oh, he overanalyzed. God Ray, stop it. You're hurting Something me. Else. <laughs> it's not so evident, but the consequences of its presence are frightening. Now watch this. God, the, just sorry, I'm, the very last thing he said there is the consequences of thinking are truly frightening. True. <sighs> you, you couldn't, you couldn't straw man this position as worse than what it is. No, I don't. I don't think that's. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen that possible. You take someone's idea and you make it worse by showing that they're being unreasonable, illogical. When someone just says flat out like go for the most no reason no logic because that's evil that's the other as, as soon as you attempt to be charitable you are still manning ray comfort yeah, yeah. and you can't you actually <laughs> this is rock bottom you can't actually straw man that straw man his position um well if i just said be dumb that would actually just be his position you so, just you're just restating his, um, he said <laughs> that but, you can't, i mean Right. Crazy. Now let's just see what, let's see what he's doing there. One sec. Okay. One sec. Let's, 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 let's see what this next bit is. Uh, Steve, can we just have a quick look at what this next bit is? Because I just can't deal any more of this waffling numpty. I've I've had enough. All right. So we just watched the remaining part of the video, which is most of the video, 
Um, and all Ray is doing is having a conversation with someone who is already Christian, and he's gaslighting that Christian to be a more, you know, practicing Christian. It, uh, we're not going to respond to this. It's ridiculous. It's not. I mean, there's, well, there's not a lot for us to respond to, and frankly, I don't want to subject you to the pain that I've just had to go through watching it. It was painful. Um, but as you can see, we. I have no idea how long we've actually been here now. It feels like a long time. It's it's getting dark outside. Yep. And we've got through less than seven minutes of less his than content. Seven. That first minute was horrendous. It was so hard to figure out what he was saying. Well, nothing. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't say he didn't anything. Say anything. So, I mean, <laughs> such as the Bigfoot stuff, all of the footprint. No, um <laughs> Yeah, said nothing in seven minutes, which is incredible. And it just shows how powerful that gish gallop technique or toric trotting technique is. You just fire off all of these claims. But I think uh, Ray was even worse than a lot of like the gish galloping t- yeah. toric trotting because he either was saying a lot, but not actually, there was, there was no substance to it. Yes. Or when he did say stuff, he just started repeating the same thing over and over again. So yeah. those last few minutes where I was getting really worn down, mm. All he was doing was repeating, don't think about things. Don't think about things. That's true. Be a child. Be stupid. That was all he was saying and for minute yeah, no after good, minute. Because yeah, that's why like the first minute was really difficult. One minute or two. He was firing a lot of claims. Whereas Which is, the last um, what minute in, in a bit was just... Yeah. yeah. Like, like, like I said a, f- Repetition. a few minutes ago, like he, he has a whopping two positions in this video. Yeah. That faith, faith and belief are different. Yeah, faith and belief are different. That's one of the major things he said, right? But faith is trust. Yeah. Yeah. Trust he says is belief. Belief is intellectual, but faith is trust. And trust is belief. Yeah, and belief it. is intellectual. Unbelievable. So, so that that's his first major point. Yes. And then the, the latter part of the video was just purely encouraging people not to think because thinking is poison to faith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, his title of the video is, is the main takeaway, right? Do this and your faith will crumble. Think. It's the only thing he described is actually doing. Thinking is the enemy. And it's like, would you expect to see that in a world where there's an all-powerful, all-loving God? I do not think so. I think that's a complete reductio. All right, so that's been the second episode of Low Fruit. We're back by popular demand, and um, I chose this video. It's the one that I found, and you're now not, you're in you're pain. Not, you're not choosing anymore. He doesn't want me to choose again. <laughs> and I thought, look, let's just ask the audience who tend to watch this stuff more than me. L- let us know the best ones that you know of. Um, what you'd like to see us react to. What we do is we be nice. See... Please don't hurt me. <laughs> hurt him. Okay. <laughs> What we will do is we will um, look at the most highly rated ones and is in like more likes on them. And then we will go watch the first minute. And if we're just like, this is gold, then we'll run with it, which will be good. Remember, Christmas is coming up, so you can probably get some doozies. Yeah, there should be some good ones in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, other where than can that. they find you, Reese? Uh, so please come check me out over at Castles and Curiosities. Uh, I have been very, very slow in producing my videos up to now. I've just moved house, which you've been seeing the lovely decor of. Mm. And then for me, well, you know, you're on my channel, so I don't really need to plug myself. <laughs> All of creation screams that there's a creator. You can see the genius of God's creative hand through creation. Yeah!